Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Well, hello. I'm super. How are you? Very good. I had a really nice weekend. I hope everybody else had a really nice weekend. We got a fun week in store. Uh, it's August. How did that happen? Kids are going to be going back to school before you know it. But uh, the good news is we still have a little bit of time. Get out there and enjoy it and spend some time with the kiddos this summer. Good news. Scientists found a way of stopping beans from causing gas. Wow. Uh, didn't we... Supposedly, a I short burst of gamma radiation before soaking the beans does the trick. I don't think I've ever talked about gamma radiation and beans before. Oh, all right. That must be that other guy that you do a radio program with, you know, <laughs> you're seeing some other radio guy on the side. Is that what's going on? No. Or was it just a case of deja vu? <laughs> Maybe that's it. Anyway, for those of you who have a problem with beans and tooting, uh, there you go. Good news because they got this. Isn't that what Beano is? What is Beano? That's something you like... You have to take that if so, you're going to eat them. So but this... This, this supposedly makes it so nothing happens. This has gamma radiation. That just doesn't sound it doesn't safe. doesn't sound safe. No, it really... <laughs> well, I no longer have gas, but for whatever reason, I've I have this... got an extra head growing on my... Incredible strength. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what happened to the Hulk? All right. Going to talk UFOs coming up after this. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. This is an area that I don't think you and I agree completely on, but UFOs. Uh -oh. do, you, do you believe in UFOs? Okay. we. You ask me this every single time you bring up UFOs. This one is a story. Okay. I should probably pay attention. You know maybe. where I stand. I don't what, know why you keep asking. What is asking. it you say again? I believe that there is life out there, but I don't think that they're coming here and sticking their hands up our butts. <laughs> I don't think that's what they would do with their technology. That's why I keep asking you, because it's so funny <laughs> how you explain it. Well, the UFO at Paranormal <laughs> College has opened in Russia in response to a rash of unexplained crop circles in that area. The faculty says they're qualified to teach the course because they have video footage featuring the type of UFOs called Belgian Triangles. And they say they're frequent visitors to their city. So, for those of you who are looking for a little education in the ufology, that's what it's called. Did you know that? Ufology? I did not know yeah, that. I, I heard that on a TV program, and I just thought, wow, what a fun thing to say. Ufology. It's the study of UFOs. So I well, wonder if when they have a party, if they play the song, We Are the Youth Gone Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, UFO and Paranormal College. It's open now in Russia. Tax troubles. Going to chat about that on the way on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This guy by the name of Gerardo Gonzalez, he's very depressed because it seems the taxes are getting the best of him. And a little more than the rest of us. The IRS says Mr. Gonzalez owes the government $16,000 in back taxes, Heidi. Okay. But the IRS loses a little credibility on this one because they say he was working in 12 different places all at the same time. Oh, yeah. That's a little hard to do. Hmm. That hasn't stopped them, however, from withholding $3,000 from his paycheck to oh, put towards gosh. his tax bill. According to the IRS, Mr. Gonzalez was working at the exact same time, mind you, in Arkansas... Arizona, Texas, North Carolina, Indiana, Nebraska, Iowa, Maryland, and Tennessee. Well, somebody's got a Social Security mm -hmm. number, huh? After some explaining, the IRS and the Social Security Administration and the FBI are finally convinced that he was not working on all those same places. <laughs> really? You don't think he was that? Uh, they've concluded that some other people might be using his Social Security yeah. number. They have canceled the debt, and they're going to return some of his money. Some? Well, I don't know how much. They're going to try to calculate what really belongs to them and what really belongs to him. He isn't so sure... The matter is over. Knowing our government, I don't blame him. Just in case the IRS returns, he sold his car because he doesn't want the government to repossess it. And he doesn't want to be accused of driving to several other states in that oh, fast auto. Poor you know? guy. So this guy is a little depressed with the IRS. So uh, $16,000 in back taxes because of all these jobs he was doing while he was you know, doing the other jobs. And 
it's a clerical error on their part, or somebody stole his uh, social security his, number. Yeah, somebody's got his number. But, a bunch uh, of people have his number, obviously. Yeah, I, I don't know. He must have had that posted online or something. I'm not sure exactly mm. what was going on. So there you go. That is uh, something that happened. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Coming up later in the program, you're going to hear something on the radio. Going to have a, a guest. Going to be chatting with Mary Kubica. She's the author of Pretty Baby, and she'll be on the program later today. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. If I have time, I've got two stories. First of all, uh, Mitchell Rauverson of Seville, Florida, was arrested by a sheriff's deputy for his 16th drunk driving charge. Oh, good lord. Now, this is the interesting thing. His license was revoked. He didn't even have a license. What drew their attention was not that he was driving erratically, but the fact that his license plate was (laughs) hand-drawn. So he just drew. He had his license revoked. They took everything away. So he's like, oh, I I can beat that. Uh, another guy was in a hurry, James Davis, and you know how frustrating it is when that car in front of you just won't speed up? Yeah. This guy was driving along, and he was just not too happy. So he decided, I'm going to honk my horn a little bit. He did that. Then he said, you know what? I'm going to pass this guy. Problem was, it was a police cruiser. <laughs> oh. He was behind him. Oh. How did you not notice that? Things got worse when they pulled him over. And that's when they discovered Mr. Davis was intoxicated. Oh, well, I would That's why he that. was honking. Yeah. He has been arrested. So there you go. A couple of idiots today on This Is Your Brain on Drugs. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll free at 1-844-204-1055. Now your moment of duh, cutbacks and layoffs, they're never fun, but they can be funny. Walker's Potato Chips, it's a Pepsi-owned British potato chip company. They let off 250 employees. Now, laying off 250 workers at once doesn't take a lot of genius, really, unless, of course, you consider the person who did the laying off. Well, he still has his job. But the moment of duh is in the details of the firing. Each person who was let go received a nice parting gift from his employer. Guess what they got for a goodbye gift? Some free chips. Exactly. How <laughs> dumb is that? They're like, thank you for working with us here at Walker's Potato Chip. Uh, it's, it's been wonderful to have you as a part of the Walker Potato Chip family. We're doing some cutbacks and we're letting people go. But the good news is, here's a bag of ruffles for you. <laughs> I don't know. Or whatever it would be. Probably not ruffles. Probably Walker's, Walker's. Potato Chips. <laughs> I'm just saying, can you imagine what a slap in the face that would be? Yeah, you'd be a little upset. I can't just don't even give him anything if that's all you're going to do because that's kind of an insult. It's not nice, and that's why I put that as our moment of duh. This scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. Doctors are studying airline passengers, saying that being cramped in tight airplane seats for hours could result in something called economy class syndrome. This is crazy. It it could cause blood clots in your legs, and it could actually kill you. That's not good. Yeah, but these airlines are going to change some of their procedures yeah. because now that the study is out, anybody who would have an issue, oh, they there's going to be a lawsuit. The tarmac for eight hours, and it yeah. killed Phyllis. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Scarlett Johansson, she's an actress, right? Yes. Uh, her, she's also the face of cosmetic giants L'Oreal. She admits that she's not afraid to use plastic surgery in the future to avoid growing older ungracefully. She says, I'll definitely have plastic surgery. I don't want to become an old hag. Is that what she said? <laughs> exactly what she said. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you, well, Scarlett. You know, uh, I I don't think I will ever... I don't. I don't think that... I, I, I'm not handsome to start with, so, you know, I, you don't... It's like Mr. Potato Head, you know? You can, you can put different stuff on me. I'm still going to look like a potato, so... I mean, I matter. look in the mirror, and I'm just like, ugh. Because yeah, I, I am beautiful. growing old. No, but you're growing old gracefully. You look good. You look hubba hubba hubba. But I, I just... I wouldn't want anybody coming at me with a scalpel, so <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. You don't want to look like Joan Rivers did? No. That was just... I, I was so sad, because I was like, she used to be such a beautiful yeah. lady, and... 
they kept pulling things back, and she just looked like she was surprised all the time. I was like, whoa, please stop, whatever you're doing. All right, officials in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. I've actually been there before. They've changed city rules on service animals after a woman took a baby kangaroo into McDonald's. The woman says a kangaroo is a therapy animal to help her cope with emotional distress. The Beaver Dam City Council voted 14 to 0 to define a service animal as a dog or a miniature horse, but not a kangaroo. What, a miniature, a miniature horse? horse? What? <laughs> 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 I don't have a rascal scooter. Instead, I ride a miniature horse wherever I go. <laughs> what on earth? I've I never wanna... heard of that. That I... must not be a Midwestern thing. I don't know. Huh? That, that That's something they do in Beaver Dam, uh, uh, Wisconsin, apparently. Yeah. All right. Bob Sabo of Easton, Connecticut, says he didn't want to wait in line to buy a lottery ticket at the Super Stop and Shop recently, so he decided to buy a ticket from a lottery vending machine. He wasn't wearing his glasses, mistakenly bought the wrong lottery ticket, even though he ended up with a $30,000 prize. Oh. So it was two mistakes. First of all, he he, he didn't want to wait. The line was too long. He's like, I'll just get one over here. And then he made another mistake, wasn't wearing his glasses, got the wrong one. But two mistakes ended up winning him 30 wow, grand. Wow, good so, for him. Yeah. I'm sure he probably didn't complain. He's like, I think I'll do that again sometime. Outside Britain's Windsor Castle recently, a tourist made the mistake of placing his hands on the back shoulder of one of Queen Elizabeth's guards. The guard yelled, step back from the Queen's guard. Then he grabbed his machine gun and pointed it directly at the tourist's head. Ugh. Oh. They take that seriously. I guess. They won't smile, but I didn't know they would assault you with a machine gun. So don't touch them. I, knew, I wonder if it was just a shoulder on the hand or if the guy was pestering him. Because that seems a bit extreme. That seems a, uh, seems more than a bit extreme. That's a, very extreme. All right. Hey, a new study found that those who drink a fair amount of sweetened sodas and fruit drinks, whether diet or regular, have an increased risk of depression. Java drinkers, on the other hand, have a slightly lower risk of the blues. So drink your java. I think that means coffee. Coffee. The study was presented at the American Academy of Neurology annual meeting in San Diego. And they have amazing off-the-hook parties (laughs) at those things. Can you imagine? You can imagine the wild times. What are you guys doing this weekend? We're heading over to San Diego. What's going on there? The American Academy of Neurology (laughs) is having their annual meeting. Swinging from the chandeliers. All right. Going to get to our strange law. A Michigan state law stipulates that a woman's hair legally belongs to her husband (laughs) what what kind of case was it that they said okay we need to define who owns this woman's hair is it her or is it her husband well she probably got a haircut that he didn't like i have no clue and since he's the one that's to look at her there was probably some sort of an argument or Or was a really 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 nasty divorce (laughs) 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 fine you have the dog you can take the kids but i'm taking your hair hair. (laughs) so again that's in michigan state law stipulates a woman's hair Legally belongs to her husband. <laughs> Don't know why. That's your strange law. And this has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for joining us on a Monday. We've got a special guest. We've got best-selling author Mary Kubica, author of The Good Girl. Also, she's got a new book out called Pretty Baby. Mary Kubica from the Chicagoland area. Mary, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? Doing great, but not nearly as good as you. Congratulations on all the success of The Good Girl. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I see here The Good Girl has recently been acquired the option rights from anonymous content to make a, a project for the big screen? Yes, absolutely. The Good Girl was options by anonymous content a few months ago so i'm very excited about it that is extremely exciting and hopefully soon we'll be able to watch the good girl on the big screen now let's turn our attention to pretty baby your new project now mary how long have you been working on pretty baby you know pretty baby took me about a year to write from start to finish it was shortly after i had sold my first book the good girl to mira books and i dove right into pretty baby so it took about a year to write, and then, you know, there's some downtime for my end, you know, as they get cover design and start publicizing it and all of that. So it's been, um, it's been a pretty exciting journey. Now, the two books have some similarities and some differences. The similarities, both set in the Chicagoland area, but the big difference, when you were working on the first book, nobody knew you were doing this? Right, absolutely. When I started working on The Good Girl, um, only my husband knew about it. I didn't tell uh, other family members or friends about it. It was a secret that I kept, and... You know, ultimately, I, I think that I had this, you know, such a, um, I didn't think the book would ever be published. You know, I knew that publishing a book was such a long shot. And 
So even though I loved to write, I was passionate about it, I knew that you know the odds of it actually getting published were pretty slim. But I wrote it nonetheless, and I kind of kept it to myself. And little by little, as I started writing the book, I started to get the sense that there was maybe something special about this book. I really, you know, I was kind of captivated myself by the storyline, and I started to really enjoy these characters. And so it took about five years to write it. And as you said, through that all, I didn't tell anybody that I was working on it. And then it took another two years after that to find an agent, and then a few months beyond that to actually secure a publishing deal. So it was seven plus years that I kept this secret to myself. I think this is a fabulous lesson for an aspiring writer to look at because they can say, you know, you hung in there. You could have given up so many times, but you hung in there and look at the success that has come from that. Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, the self-doubt is huge, I have to say. You know, when I was writing it, I thought, oh, boy, will I ever finish this story? Will I ever get, you know, sell the book? I had no idea. But it was, again, something I just loved and I was passionate about. And that's, I agree, you know, for for authors out there, people who are working on a book right now, stick with it. It is a long journey, and um, there are a lot of obstacles in the way, but definitely stick with it, you know, and, and it does pay off. And your journey is even more exciting because you had sent out all your stuff looking for a literary agent, got a lot of no's, but then one of those no's came back and became a yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. When I first sent out the manuscript to agents, you know, across the board, it was all no's. And this one agent in particular, who's the woman who now represents me, at the time she had been working um, as an assistant for someone else when the good girl first landed on her desk. And she says, you know, she tells me now how she stayed up all night reading the book the first time and how she really loved it. But at the time she was an assistant and she didn't have the authority to take on the project and someone else um, at her company decided to pass on it at the time. And two years later, she had been promoted to an agent, and so she was actively seeking out her own clients. And she remembered the good girl. It stuck with her for those two years, and she reached back out to me and, um, you know, wanted to know, was the book represented? Had I sold it? So it was, it was really kind of a dream come true. And in retrospect, it just meant the world to me that this book – stuck with her for two years, and I knew that she was the best person for it. Well, Mary, I think everything happens for a reason, and I'm very excited that two of you get to work together. That is really cool. Now, speaking of working together, you were doing your first one kind of in secret. Nobody knew you were doing this. Now, you're a best-selling author. How different is that, the whole process, as a best-selling author compared to just kind of doing this in your free time? Yeah, you know, it was different. I When I wrote The Good Girl, of course, there was you know, I hadn't sold it, so there was no deadline. It was I wrote it at my leisure. With Pretty Baby, things were different. I, I had um, a contract. I had to get a proposal approved first. Um, then I was under deadline. So things were a little different. But that said, I also had the support network that I didn't have when I was working on The Good Girl. I had an agent now, and I had an editor. So I had people that I could bounce ideas off of if I kind of hit a dead end or just that could kind of help walk me through the process. I was also connecting to more and more authors at that point so I could really kind of relate to some people that were in the business and, you know, going through some of the things that I was now going through. So things were different on many levels. And Pretty Baby, a novel by Mary Kubica, is available now. Mary, where can I find a copy of the book? You know, you can you can get it at your local bookstore. You can order online. Um, if you go straight to my website, which is marykubica.com, K-U-B-I-C-A, I have some links on there of, um, you know, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, all the different booksellers who are selling it. Again, our guest today has been Mary Kubica, and you can pick up a copy of her new book, Pretty Baby, wherever you like to buy your books, online, in stores, wherever you buy them, you can find it there. And this is like the American success story. Congratulations on everything, Mary. (laughs) Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we appreciate you joining us on the John and Heidi Show right here on a Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Today is a very special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, the third day of August, and today is, listen to this, Assistance Dog Day. We were just talking about We were just about talking this. about they just changed the law in uh, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. For those of you who weren't listening earlier, uh, it's now they've defined service animals as a service dog or a service miniature horse, but not a service kangaroo. I so. must be the only one that thinks that's bizarre because <laughs> that, that 
I'm laughing over here. You don't think I think that's bizarre? I think it's bizarre. But today is Assistance Dog Day. It is not Assistance Kangaroo Day for whatever reason. <laughs> it's also Friendship Day, so give somebody a big old hug and tell them, I love you, friend. It's National Psychic Day, but you already knew that. And it's Watermelon Day. I, I love, love watermelon. That. That's cool. I like watermelon. We hardly ever have them, though. Because I buy it. It's, it's too way much. too much. Yeah, and there's sell, only four of us. They should so. really sell those watermelons smaller. <laughs> <laughs> or they could cut them into like, you know, tiny little pieces. Maybe. That, oh, I guess I've seen those before. All right. Anyway, get out there and celebrate one way or another. It is a special day. It is Monday, the third day of August. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. This next story may kind of have to come with a warning, Heidi. Oh, uh, for We're going to talk about topless women at swimming pools. Oh, all right. So I just want to make sure you know. Believe it or not, lifeguards at the Wayne County Family Water Park in Detroit... They called the police on a topless female swimmer. But let me tell you the rest of the story because this right now you're going, well, yeah, yeah, I suppose if there was a woman walking around topless, yeah, I suppose they'd have to call the police. When I say woman, I mean female. And when I say female, I mean, okay, she was three years old. Oh, good yeah. Lord. Really? Mm-hmm. Female swimmer <laughs> in question, three years old. The girl's mother, Carmia Sorrell, was told by park security guards that topless female toddlers are inappropriate at the pool. Fortunately, the police had some sense. An officer from the 5th Precinct finally arrived, assessed the situation, and told the park manager that Kamira was doing nothing wrong. The park then apologized to Kamira. So I wonder if there's going to be a lawsuit by the time I this mean, is I all over and done I mean, I can see them wanting to make sure that the child is safe. Like, like yeah. if, it's, if it's a thing where you have to worry about, is there some pervert out here that could yeah. think that's exciting or something? I don't know. But... To I get understand. the police involved, yeah. I mean, and come here's on. The, here's the thing. I understand. Now, again, this is a three-year-old girl. If it was a 13-year-old girl, all of a sudden you're in a whole different ballpark now. But it's a three-year-old girl. This is just a little baby, and they were swimming, and she was topless swimming. And I don't know. I guess I can understand where people are saying, um, But what you is the reason you wear. wouldn't buy your child a bathing yeah, suit? Yeah, you should, you should have her wear yeah. a top, you know, because you're training her to go around topless. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> no, it's probably but not. anyway, it was an interesting story, and I thought uh, we might have some fun chatting about that. So interesting. I, I, I left a little bit of room, but we, we now we're pretty much done talking about it. So uh, first of all, my question is, Heidi, did you ever go topless swimming when you were three? I still go topless swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that answer. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi show. Coming up, we're going to talk about Santa Claus. Yeah, he's in the news and it's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheeliter.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheeliter.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. It's a guy from Idaho. No, not Idaho. Where is it? Utah. That's it. A state district court originally banned David Porter from taking the name Santa Claus, saying it might have a chilling effect on anyone who wanted to be uh, wanted to sue him in the future. Imagine trying to sue Santa Claus. Who would you have to be? The Grinch? But Utah Supreme Court in Salt Lake City now has given the blessing to the name. Uh, Mr. Claus, who bleaches his natural red hair white every month, said... I have a big, bushy white beard. I have a big tummy and glasses. I look pretty authentic. He even takes off the entire month of December to make appearances at parties. So he's a Santa imposter. So he wanted to change his real name to Santa. He did. And he was finally given the the thumbs up. He is now officially Santa Claus. He's not the only one. There's others out there, too, that officially have changed I don't know that I would want... Well, that. I figured he's, you know, he's like, hey, uh, I'm I'm a chubby guy. I'm a jolly fella. I might as well just go with it. You know, I'm kind of getting there myself. So I'm, I'm, wearing, <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing red today. Just trying to I, I will not be married to somebody named <laughs> Santa Claus, <laughs> just so you know, ahead of time. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Santa and Heidi Show. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. All right, I'll keep my name. Thank you so much for tuning in on a Monday. It's the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. 
Police in central New Jersey say they arrested a man for burglary after he returned to the victim's house to apologize. The police arrested 35-year-old Craig Fletcher of Elizabeth shortly after the homeowner told him that the man rang his doorbell, then apologized for breaking in, and then ran off. The homeowner said that he interrupted the burglary because he, he came home while the guy was breaking in. Right. He chased the burglar who had stuffed three laptops and an Xbox game console into a backpack. The intruder threw the bag down and got away. So he really didn't get anything. And then he came back later, rang the doorbell, and said, hey, I just wanted to apologize for robbing your house. And, and then he ran away. And then the police came and arrested him. So that is a very bizarre story. The good news is uh, I don't think he'll do this again. We've talked about this before. I, I would not be cut out to be a burglar. I could not do that. I, I wouldn't be no. cut out to. There's no way. I would feel terrible. Yeah. I, I go back when I get the wrong amount of change. You know, I, my wife's like, "Where are we going?" I'm like, "Oh, she gave me the wrong change." So she shorted you? And I'm like, "No, I got an extra dollar." And you're like, are you, "You're going back to give her an extra dollar?" I'm like, "Well, it's just the right thing to do because I think that's what I would want others to do if if I made that mistake." But this guy, he went back because he felt bad, and then he got arrested. So I guess he did something wrong. He probably should be arrested. But it would have been, wouldn't it have been kind of nice if they would have said, you know what, thanks for being a nice guy after all. We're going to just give you a warning. No. You don't, I don't think he's going to rob anything ever again. Well, so he still has to be punished. You don't break the law yeah, and yeah. expect to not have consequences. But he didn't have to go back and apologize. That's well, what no, he didn't have to go back and apologize. In clearly, fact, he probably should not have. <laughs> yeah, well, probably. But I'm saying they're setting the wrong example in my mind. We could go on for hours. But we really can't because we don't have that kind of time around here. Thanks for joining us. It's a Monday, and you're listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to The John and Heidi Show podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi show. We live in a very connected world, Heidi. Is there any moment of the day that our cell phones are not within reach? Oh, no. Hardly ever. Apparently not. Because an online address book site called Plaxo called uh, uh, rather found that 19% of us have dropped our cell phones down the toilet. <laughs> I've never I have done never that. done that. It's I, it's come close before where it's been like in a yeah, pocket. and uh-huh. I've almost done that. Yeah. I've not done that. It's not bad enough. A new T-Mobile survey discovered 59% of us would not hesitate to take the plunge and grab the phone from the toilet. Of course you would. Well, what else would you do? Yeah, you say, you well, I'm going to flush, flush that down. down. Yeah. Yep. Reaching into the toilet to save your phone. I think that that's, honestly, it says only 59%. So you're telling me 41% of the people would just say, well, that phone's gone. I don't think so. That on-the-spot math was impressive, Thank you. by the way. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, in all fairness, I do have it written down. I calculated this earlier. And it's, uh, it's funny. We're, I'm not good at math. No, like quick, I'm not. E- quick I'm math. awful. And it's funny to try to do that on the spot. And I uh, every time, I usually mess it up. So <laughs> I might have gotten that one wrong. Who knows? Uh, anyway, what what is the dumbest thing you ever did with a cell phone? Because I, I remember one time I bought a cell phone, like that day, bought a cell phone. I was so mad. They asked me, do you want the insurance on that? I was like, no. Don't want that. Not, I'm, a, I'm not a sucker. And then that day I b- busted my phone. <laughs> Terrible. The it was very like shattered day. I mean, it was in pieces. Barely out of the box. It's like, um, I'm back. She's like, oh, did you need something else? I'm like, yeah, I need a new phone. It's like, already? <laughs> 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 did you get the insurance? I was like, no, I was a guy who said, no, nah, I don't need no insurance. <laughs> Here's more money now. Thank you. Do you want the insurance? No, I don't want the insurance. <laughs> True story. I didn't. I was like, yeah, I'm never going to do that again. Walking out, I dropped my phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by Direct TV. Call 1 800 259 7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1 800 259 7646. What started as a police thing resulted in some good news instead. I always try to end the program, Heidi, with something positive. I thought this was pretty darn positive. As part of an undercover operation, they were uh, thinking, hey, let's, let's figure out what happens if we put a, a person out there that's very vulnerable. So the Vancouver Police Department put Mark Horsley 
Uh, they put him up to the test of growing some facial hair. They borrowed an, an expensive wheelchair, making him an easy mark for criminals. Over the course of five days of this man sitting on the streets, looking as though he would be pretty easy to rob, <laughs> over five days he sat in the chair with an open fanny pack, money showing, trying to get people, you know, entice people, rob me. Instead of strangers snatching his money, 300 people made contact to ask if he had somebody to care for him. Do you need any food? Is everything okay? Do you need some? Do you Aww. need some money? So three hundred good deeds, That's not nice. a single bad deed. Vancouver police were shocked because they thought, well, let's put somebody on the street and let's see what happens. This happened over the course of five days. They literally had this guy out there as a decoy, thinking, let's catch the criminal activity in Vancouver. <laughs> Hmm. Let's let's catch these bad Canadian thugs. And there's none of them. <laughs> but they do have 300 good deeds. That's nice. 300 people have stopped to say, is everything okay? Do you, do you need anything? It's kind of warm out. You want me to grab you some water? I do have to say that if I was somebody who was going to mug someone, <laughs> I would not go up to okay. somebody in a wheelchair okay. I was just gonna with say. their money <laughs> hanging out of a fanny. I mean, how... I'm sure they have a hard. I'm sure thieves and muggers have a hard enough time sleeping the way it is without knowing they that they don't. went and stole it. You from. had me really concerned because when you said if I was a mugger, I thought you were going to say that would have been an easy <laughs> mark. I'm so no, proud of you, like, Heidi. <laughs> so proud of you for not being a, for whatever reason in my mind, what you were. So. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that, baby. I kind of feel bad admitting that. I love you. <laughs> I do. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Monday. Thank you so much for joining us on the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Now your bonus break, and it is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You can learn more about them at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. When you go there, you're going to see a couple of different opportunities to get razors delivered to your door. Let me tell you the difference. The very first one on there is called the Humble Twin. It's a dollar a month plus two dollars shipping, so it works out to three dollars a month total. And they'll bring the razors right to your door. Now these are razors that are better than what most people have anyway. So if you're getting cheap razors now somewhere else, this is better than that. And they deliver them to you, and it's three bucks a month, so that's awesome. Now if you have nicer razors and you're saying, I don't want to have a cheaper razor. I want a nice one. They have one for $6 a month. It's nice. I actually have my first shipment coming this week of those. I, I upgraded the – because I have two different accounts. <laughs> I upgraded the one to that. And then I also have the Executive Series. It's $9 a month total, and those are awesome. Like if you're used to the ones that have multiple blades, the really good ones, you want the best razor money can buy, these are the ones that you get. $9 a month, they'll bring it right to your door. And uh, check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, here's what I found. This is kind of a funny story. Uh, What if Noah's Ark was built today? Well, maybe we can talk about that. For over three decades now, many residents in Frostburg, Maryland, have been puzzled and slightly annoyed at a three-story high, 400-foot-long metal and concrete frame that Pastor Richard Green calls his modern Noah's Ark. This is happening. And it's really happening. Pastor Green said he came, the idea came to him in a vision in 1976. He works on the thing in his spare time, and he's saying, you know, I'm just awaiting judgment day. Some neighbors are patient. Others are not so patient. Uh, they're calling the ark an eyesore and that uh, it depresses property values, and they're wasting religious charity money on this stupid project because they're like, so people are donating to this dumb thing? Anyway... So far, contributions to Pastor Green's Ark have reached how much, do you think, Heidi? How much uh, has gone into this? He's been working on it in millions, his spare time I would assume. since 1976, and the t- tally so far is about a million bucks. Oh, just a million. Mm-hmm. I was thinking it would be more than that. No. Now, here's the thing. This guy is a pastor, Pastor Richard Green. I'm not a pastor, but I've read the Bible. And in the Bible, it says, God will not flood the earth again. He made that promise after Noah's Ark. And Noah's, yeah, so he probably doesn't need... So why are you building an ark? Right. He said that's the one thing we know he's not going to do right. at end of times. He's like, you know what? I'm never going to flood the earth again. Okay, so we don't need to build boats. Why are you building a boat? <laughs> Unless this is Noah's bunker. <laughs> he's trying to... You Noah's know, bunker. Because it sounds like it. That's the, awesome. The 400-foot-long foot metal and concrete frame. A metal and concrete boat? Never heard of one of those. Metal and concrete bunker? Now you're maybe talking sense to me here. 
So uh, it's interesting. This is in Frostburg, Maryland. I'm going to have to Google that. I want to see what it looks like. Huh. That's going to do it for our bonus break. We appreciate you joining us right here on the John and Heidi Show. Your bonus break is brought to you by dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.